Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. This one is actually especially exciting because we are going to use some AI in Android together with Camera X. And in particular, what we will build is a so-called landmark recognizer. So we can actually just have our camera and hover it over or point it to a landmark and the app will then tell us what that actually is. And you can see I already have my camera open here. It's currently lying with the face down. And it is recognizing some kind of landmark here, which is of course wrong in this case. But let's open Photoshop because I've prepared some photos here and open up the emulator. And if I now point my camera here on the Stonehenge, you will see it actually recognizes it as such. And if we then move a bit on, then yeah, there we get the Eiffel Tower and a little bit further, we got the Big Ben. So that is working perfectly fine. And in this video, you will not only learn how you can use Camera X for image processing so that we really go through every single frame and then analyze it and feed it into our AI model. No, you're also going to learn how you can implement such a TensorFlow model in Android to classify images and all that in real time. And you might now wonder where I got that AI model from. That comes from tfhub.dev. So that's basically a website where you can find tons of AI models that have already been trained. And you can just download these here for free and use in your app. Lots of different use cases. Also, if you would like me to make videos about different AI use cases, like audio, text, um, video, then just let me know that below what you would like me to see. In this video, we're going to deal with image processing. So you can click on problem domains image, and then we want to have image classification. And here you can already see this is the landmarks collection I've used. If we click on that, then there are different sets. So depending on where you live, you could use a different uh, AI set here. I downloaded the one from Europe. That's also the one that I will include in GitHub. But if you're maybe from Asia, uh, then you can download the Landmarks Classifier Asia. So you can also recognize your Asian landmarks. So what you would need to do is after you've chosen your landmark, then you click on that. You get to this page. Then wait a little moment until this loads. You can see it already um, it gives you a little sample. You can also upload your photos here to see what this recognizer would um, classify it as. And if we scroll down, then here's on the one hand a version for TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is the library we use to use such AI models that have been trained. That is the normal library, which is very popular on uh, Python, for example. But on Android, we can't use that real TensorFlow library, but there is rather a TensorFlow Lite version for mobile devices. So if you want the TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite model, which you just need to use for mobile devices, then click on this TF Lite here. And then you can just hit download and download it on your machine. And if you've done that, then you need to jump into Android Studio and also include that downloaded TF Lite file here. You can do this by going to your app folder, creating a new directory and searching for assets. We want to include the source main assets folder. So the assets folder is basically just a folder where you can put, put in any outside assets, any outside files you want to include in your app perfect for for TensorFlow models. So here we just want to paste what I've copied before. So that's just the downloaded TF Lite file from that just uh, showed website. Enter. Um, do I want to add that to Git? No, I don't want to add that to Git. You can download that yourself. Or you know what? I will actually include it. Um, so you can ignore this, but I want to add it to Git so you can just clone the repo and you can use it as it is without needing to watch this tutorial. So added that and we are now good to start. What I also recommend is to take a look at the initial code in my GitHub repository below because you need these dependencies. On the one hand, Camera X, that is not new to you because I hopefully uh, hope you, you watched the previous two videos which were about taking photos with Camera X and recording videos. And in this video, we're going to take this to the next level and also process what Camera X actually shows us. So that is for Camera X and the bottom three dependencies are for TensorFlow Lite, which we need to classify AI models or rather classify the images with an AI model. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, which we also did in the previous videos is to add a little composable in order to show our camera preview. 
I will still do this here again. For those of you who missed the previous videos, it's really quick. So we can just create a new file here and let's actually make a presentation layer. So new package in our root package, go to presentation and create a preview or camera preview in there. Camera preview, make that a file. Yes, add that to Git. And then have a composable in here, camera preview, which will take in a controller. So as I said in the last video, that is a life cycle camera controller, which is used to just control your camera, to take photos, to uh, determine front, back camera, these kinds of things. And we want to assign a modifier. And in here, we can then get a reference to the lifecycle owner. And we get that by local lifecycle owner current. So we can attach this lifecycle owner to our camera controller. So it's also aware of our activities and lifecycle. Let's then use an Android view. Since the preview view, which comes from camera X, is not available as a composable at least yet. But we can very easily work around that by just having an Android view with a factory in which we create that preview view from the view system, attach the context, and we can make some changes to that with apply. On the one hand, we want to say this.controller is equal to the controller we passed. And we want to bind this to the lifecycle um, bind, actually controller.bind to lifecycle. Bind lifecycle and the lifecycle owner is this. Then we're going to assign a modifier and we're already done here in this file. So what would be the next thing? Okay, next up, I want to dive into our root package, create a domain package. And in the domain package, we're going to put two classes or two files. On the one hand, we're going to create a so-called classification. That will be a data class. A classification is in the end nothing else than the output of our AI model. So we feed something into this model, which in this case is the frame, so the image. And we just do that very frequently, frame by frame, we feed in the new image into this AI model. The AI model processes that frame based on its based on how it was trained. And then the outputs will be the classifications. So it will then spit out a few landmarks which the model thinks it sees on that photo which we fed in. And on the one hand, it will give us a name of that landmark, which is what we want to display. But on the other hand, it will also give us a score, basically how sure the model is that the landmark is really what it thinks it is. So for example, it will give you a score of uh, 0 0.8. And that means it's 80% 80, 80 sure that what it's seeing is, for example, the Eiffel Tower. And I will create this classification class just that we can bundle these information a bit. So on the one hand, we get the name of the classification and we get the score, which is a float. I will not use the score here to display it on the UI or so, but I think it might help you to also learn how you get to know the score, since that is uh, quite important if you integrate a model into your app and you really want to get a feeling for how sure the model really is that what it tells you it is, it really is. Cool. In domain, we also want to create an interface called landmark classifier. And this interface will take a function or will uh, expose a function called classify and that will take in a bitmap. Not only a bitmap, but also the rotation of that bitmap. And it will then spit out a list of these classifications. So this is the function we will call very frequently in our image analyzer later on when we implement the uh, camera X related functionality. Every single frame, or at least uh, every few frames, we say we want to, or we have that bitmap here, we feed that into this function together with its rotation. This function will then yeah, really use the model and feed in that frame to the model to classify it and will then spit out a list of uh, classifications. So it might say, hey, I'm 80% sure is the Eiffel Tower. I'm 10% sure it is the Brandenburg Gate and so on. And now the interesting part is of course, how we implement this. And that's actually not too complex. So AI always sounds so super complex. It is super complex if you train your own models and uh, get deeper into it. But if you actually have a pre-trained model like we do here and you just want to use it in your app, uh, that is not a lot of code. So let's create a data package since feeding something into an AI model is clearly data related. And here we create that TF light landmark classifier. And this will take in a bunch of constructor parameters. On the one hand, we need the context here. 
We then need a threshold, which is in the end of float, and I set that to 0.5f. So the threshold is starting from which score we actually want to include um, classifications. So if the model is less sure than 50%, we, we want to say, ignore that. Then it's not enough, uh, enough probability that there is a match. And I want to have a private val for the max results, which is an integer. And we set that in our case to one. You can adjust this if you want your list to contain more than one entry, then just increase this to three, five, whatever. And then the model will spit out more landmarks it might see on an image. But here in our use case, we just want to show the landmark where the AI model is the, the most sure that it really is what it thinks it is. Then we can say that is a landmark classifier. And we of course need to implement the function command i classify and for that in order to classify something with tf light tensorflow light we need a private val actually private var classifier which is an image classifier that comes from tensorflow by default it's null but we want to have a function set up classifier which just initializes that in this function we can also configure this classifier so on the one hand we want some base options which we get with exactly that base options that builder you can set the number of threads i want to set that to two you can also make that a constant then you can say you want to use the gpu i want to leave that out here and some other settings i'm not sure what that is for we just want to call build here and then define some further options like this which are called image classifier that image classifier options refer to the builder again and here we want to first of all set the base options to our base options we want to set the max results to our max results we want to set the score threshold to our threshold and then call build and then we just call try catch we want to catch illegal state exceptions when something goes wrong then we just print the stack trace if everything goes right hopefully we want to say our classifier is equal to image classifier create from file and options that is what we want so we now want to create this classifier from a file which is our ai model and some options which we've created which we've created before so the context then the model path what is that well the path to a model it already uses the assets folder as a default path so we can just specify landmarks.tflight or whatever name you chose here in the assets folder and then we pass in our options for the image classifier options. And then in here in the classify function, we want to check if our classifier is null. If it is, we want to set it up. So set up classifier. And after that, the exciting part starts since we now want to classify the frame. And for that, we need a so-called image processor. We can create this from image processor.builder. Here we don't need to pass in anything. And we also don't need to configure anything here we can just call build next up we need to take this image image processor feed in our bitmap but it takes that bitmap as a so-called tensor image so just a tensorflow format so we want to get that and convert it by saying image processor dot process so that takes in a tensor image and also spits out a tensor image and we want to process our bitmap and we can simply say tensor image from bitmap and pass in that bitmap. Next up, what we want to do is want to also rotate the image with this rotation. Since there are some predefined rotation constants we might want to use. And for that, I will use a private function called um, get orientation from rotation. Pass in the rotation in here. And that will return an image processing options that orientation so that the model also knows where which part of the image is and how it can properly rotate that and here we want to return when the rotation is surface dot rotation zero so if it's not rotated at all then we assign image processing options orientation right chop it is 
I'm personally not fully understanding these orientation values here and what this right top refers to because I also didn't get this function here um, from my own brain. <laughs> but these are related to the uh, so-called axis value, so the image metadata, you can say. And I think this right top refers to, the, in this case, the, the right top corner of our image. And if the image is not rotated at all, then yeah, the right top corner of our image would be at the right top, obviously. Um, if we move on and say surface rotation 90, so if it's rotated by 90 degrees counterclockwise, always when it's about rotations. So we would now rotate it by 90 degrees. And then we come up to image processing options orientation. In this case, top left and so on. I will just paste these other values here. So 180 degrees would be right bottom. And please correct me if I'm wrong with what I thought it was. Last but not least, 270 degrees would then be bottom right. And here we can just say else. So we get rid of this error. And then we can say val image processing options is image processing options builder. We set the orientation to get orientation from rotation and pass in the rotation we have. I get this. And then in order to get our results, we call our classifier. That classify, that is where the magic happens, pass in our tensor image and our image processing options. And those results are now a list of classifications. So a list of multiple classifications. And we now want to loop over this list and flat map it. So return results that flat map. I will explain in a moment what all that does. That gives us the classifications, plural. And these classifications have categories, which we now want to map. We get a reference to each category. And each category, we now want to map to our domain model, this classification, and the name is category that display name and the score is category that score. We then go down here, call that distinct by it dot name. And if that's null, we return an empty list. So what the heck happens here? So first of all, we just go over all these categories and map these to our classification model. So each category just contains the name of the classification. So for example, Stonehenge and the score, how sure the AI model is that that's really Stonehenge. And since we might have multiple categories, we want to also map all these together to a single flat list. So we don't want to have a list of lists. We just want to have one single list with all the entries in there. We then say distinct by the name, which basically means that if there are duplicates in that list, we remove all duplicates except for one last entry, of course. And that's due to how this model seems to work. Um, I'm not sure if I can, oh, yeah, here. You can see for some reason it classifies the same image sometimes multiple times as one landmark, which I want to avoid. So we just remove all the duplicates so that we only have one Parthenon here. And that's already it for a classifier. We can now go to presentation and have our landmark image analyzer, which will now be the camera X related class, which now gets called for every single frame and then gives us that frame. We can convert it to a bitmap and feed it into our classifier to get the outputs. Let's see how that works. On the one hand, this needs a classifier, landmark classifier, and we get an on results lambda, um, which gives us a list of classification, our domain model, and uh, returns unit. So that gets called whenever there is a change in classifications. And then this would implement the image analysis that analyzer interface. And we can override the analyze function, which gives us this image proxy we can then use to now convert that to a bitmap and feed it into our AI model. Okay, so let's first get the rotation degrees. We did that in the previous videos already. We can get that from the image, image info dot rotation degrees. And we can then say we have our bitmap by saying image that to bitmap, but we are not done at this point. 
we can't just take the bitmap as it is. I mean, we could, but it's not ideal because if we take a look at the model and scroll down to what kind of data it expects, for most models, or for hopefully all models, you will also find something like this. The, the size of the image that the model expects as an input. And here it wants that as a square that is 321 by 321 pixels. So we now have an image which is in portrait format, but we need to make a square format out of that and save that as 321 by 321 pixels. How do we do that? Well, we want to center crop the image. So as I showed you here in my demo app, this green square we now want to cut out from our picture and crop it so that this is the final result which we feed into tensorflow also yeah a little bit cut off from the edges as well so that we have a 321 by 321 square somewhere in here the original picture will already be scaled down by this image analyzer since we don't want to feed in and call this function here uh, for every single frame for a 4K or full HD picture, no, is already a smaller picture on its own. Okay, what does that mean? In presentation, I want to have a little bitmap extension file. And in here, we're going to extend bitmap and have a function that center crops a bitmap. This will take in a desired width and a desired height which will be our 321. And we first calculate the X start. So from where we want to start cropping on the X axis, that will be the original width of the bitmap minus our desired width divided by two, because we have uh, two edges obviously from where we need to cut something off. And let's keep that an integer. Do the same for the Y start, that is height minus desired height divided by two and if for some reason these values are invalid, so if the x start is less than zero or the y start is less than zero or the desired width is larger than the actual width or the desired height is larger than the actual height, then we throw an illegal argument exception. Invalid arguments for center cropping. If that's not the case, we want to return bitmap, create bitmap. We pass in this, so the bitmap we quote this function on, but we crop based on x start, y start, and we pass in the desired width and the desired height. With that, we effectively achieve a center crop effect. Okay, in the analyzer, we can then Call set a crop here with 321 by 321 pixels. We then get the results from our classifier that classify, pass in that bitmap, and the rotation decrease. And then we can call on results, and we pass in the results that we get from the classifier. Last but not least, we want to close the image to tell our analyzer that we fully processed it for this, well, that we fully processed this single frame and that we might want to move on. One last thing I like to do here is to skip some frames. Um, so I want to have a private var frame skip counter, which is initially zero, but the reason for that is simply that I don't want to analyze an image every single frame. That's too quick. Then also the text always jumps very quickly and it's hard to read it. Uh, it's totally fine if we just analyze an image once a second. So I just want to skip 60 frames after analyzing a frame that's not only much more performant but also results in a better user experience. So if the frame skip counter modulo 60, so 60, oops, modulo 60, so if that's zero, that means we, yeah, so 60 frames have passed and then we want to do all this, like here. So. If we have a frame rate of 60 frames per second, then that means we analyze an image once a second. And after this if statement, we say frame skip counter and we increase that by one, like this. Cool. So now the main part really is in place. We just need to use that in our UI. So in here, we're going to use 
a box. The modifier is modifier fill max size. And in this box, we're going to use the camera preview. We need to create the controller first of all. Just like in the last video with the remember block. It's pretty slow right now. Remember. Hello. I'll enter to import that. No. Import function remember. And in here, we're going to create our lifecycle camera controller, which takes in the context, pass in the application context. We call it apply. Here we want to set the enabled use cases to camera controller dot image analysis. That's what we want to do with our camera, nothing else. We don't, we don't want to take any pictures or record videos. And we want to set the image analysis and not analyzer. That's our word. Um, with our context compat dot main executor. So which thread we want this to run on, which executor rather, which handles all this behind the scenes, pass in the context and our analyzer is what we just created. So in order to create that analyzer, we first need a list of our classifications, of our classifications by remember, mutable list of, uh, not non mutable list, mutable state of, so compose state, empty list by default, and that is a list of classifications. Like this. Alt enter, Alt enter, import, Alt enter. Yeah, it imported. Okay, then we want our analyzer, which is also created inside of remember. So our landmark image analyzer, which takes in the classifier, classifier, let's just create it here. TF light landmark classifier. Context is application context. And let's leave the rest as it is, since we have default parameters. On result is, on results actually, would be the function that gets called when our analyzer classified something. So here, here we get the classifications and we can update our state. Classifications is equal to it. And now with this analyzer, we can pass this in here to our lifecycle camera controller, which will then attach to the camera preview. Okay, controller and make sure modifier fill max size. That always makes sure that our frames are analyzed, but we of course also want to display the results, which we can do with a little text. So if the classifications are actually not empty, and we can loop over these and actually put all that in a column like this modifier modifier film x width open this here and i want to arrange this column at the top of our screen so align top center and then for the classifications we loop over these and we display these as a text so in my case since we set the um, amount or the, the max number of classifications to one, there will only be one entry, but if you increase that, then you'll also see more. So the text will be it.name, modifiers, modifier.filmx width, and we just give it a little bit of background. So background, material theme, color scheme, primary container, and some padding padding of 8 dp. I'll enter to import dp. And Android Studio is super slow right now. I have no idea why. 8 dp, and then the text align should be center. The font size is 20 sp. Also, Alt enter to import that. And I want to set the text color to material theme, color scheme, primary. Okay, now we can display our classifications. We can preview everything. And I think the last thing that's missing is camera permission. So we should go to manifest, add our user's permission, camera, 
also go here, Alt Enter to add this user's feature tag that we use the camera as a hardware feature. And then we need to quickly request that. So yeah, let's create a little function down here in our activity. Has camera permission is equal to context combat. Check self permission this manifest from Android dot permission dot camera. Then if that is equal to package manager permission granted, we know we have the camera permission, so we can scroll up. Again, do a very simplified permission handling here. So if we don't have that, we have to request that activity compat request permissions, this um, array of manifest permission camera request code zero, and we should be fine. So I would say, let's try this out, launch this, take a look here. Well, I didn't show you how you can make this little square, but I also don't think that this is the core of this video when dealing with AI. I can tell you in a moment how I did it, but it's, it's pretty easy. There we go. Our app launched while using the app. And yes, camera access is already working. And you can see it actually recognizes my mouse pad as a landmark. <laughs> of course, that's not what we want. Let's open Photoshop and have our sample landmarks here and see if it actually recognizes these. And it does not yet recognize it as Stonehenge. That's weird. Maybe I did something wrong. Is that, ah, that is the Eiffel Tower, the Big Ben. Okay, it, it's, it seems to work. Stonehenge, not sure why Stonehenge doesn't work. Like this maybe. That is weird. I, I will check that off cam if that's just a model or if I missed something, but these two landmarks seem to work. Eiffel Tower, Big Ben. Okay, very cool, very cool. <laughs> it seems to work and I will check that with Stonehenge, but uh, I think that might just be the model. With the other one, it seemed to be very consistent though. So uh, I will get back to you in a moment. All right, I found the issue. There actually was one in this get orientation from rotation function, um, which yeah, where I made a little mistake. Actually, we need to swap the first case with the last one. So here it would be, it would need, would need to be rotation 270 degrees. This would result in bottom right. And in all other cases, we want the top, um, right top actually. And if we do that, relaunch the app, take a look here, then we should now also be able to recognize Stonehenge. Yes, you can see that is working. If we move to the Eiffel Tower, that's working. And the Big Ben is also working. And if we increase the number of results we get here in our classifier, for example, to three, and relaunch this, then you will also see what happens here, then we should be able to, to get multiple results. Yes. So then it is the, the, the most sure that it's a big bend, but it could also be one of these other two things. And then here, okay, it's super sure it's the Eiffel Tower, nothing else. And here as well. So that was probably your very first AI app in Android. You can find the entire source code down below my GitHub. And if you now want to take this knowledge and just put it on the next level and really want to get the skills you need in the industry as an Android developer, then check the first link in the series description because uh, you will find a lot of advanced Android premium courses there, which are not only a brilliant way to, to get these skills, but also to support the future of this channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.